So for today's morning chat, these are our guests, if you'd like to introduce yourself. My name is Caesar. Uh, some people call me C's or Sessa as well. Cool. My name is Javier. That's what's up. <laughs> <laughs> cool, man. Thank you. Do we, should we keep going? Yeah, yeah more about myself? Yeah. You first? Me first? You. You? Me? Yeah. Yeah. No? All right, my name is Caesar, as I told you guys. Um, I'm an alumni here, so I went to school here. I remember being in Kavada's class. Um, I was in it for two years. Back then, uh, we were doing um, Illustrator, Photoshop. I don't think we got to InDesign, and we didn't get to video editing. I think it was that good back then, but anyway. Um, so yeah, I went to school here. It was an interesting experience. Um, this being my neighborhood school. Um, and I went to elementary school in a Willow Glen area um, from kinder to eighth grade. It was a bilingual immersion program. He went there as well. So, um, so neighborhood school kind of switch up was like very different. Um, got to learn a lot of things, met a lot of people from this neighborhood, you know. After high school, I went to community college for like five, six years. I was studying um, graphic design, theater, music technology. Like I had so many interests and just like everything wasn't really like adding up. I had like maybe like uh, five classes left in theater, seven classes left in music technology, 10 classes left in graphic design. After like several years of uh, trying like college, I, um, I, I um, applied for year up. It's this like IT technical program that you do six months of training and six months internship at a big company. So I did my internship with Facebook, um, with Oculus, which is a virtual reality company that Facebook owns. After that uh, internship, I got converted. So this was at age uh, 24. I'm now 26 and I've been uh, working with Milestone Technologies uh, for two years and I do IT and events. So we have OC5 coming up. I know you went to OC4. So we got OC5 coming up and uh, we're getting all these PCs ready, all this equipment ready for, uh, for, for the huge event, our huge convention of the year. Um, so my whole goal of like the path I took, you know, it's not, it's different. Um, I know like I tried college, but it just wasn't for me. Um, so I did this like technical school because I wanted something quick and I wanted to be financially stable um, so I can pursue my artistic things on the side. So now, uh, two years later, I have an art studio in downtown San Jose where I do like acrylic and stuff like that. And then I, I do some acting with him. Uh, he does like video and stuff like that. So like I'm barely starting to um, really get in my element. And um, even then, you know, I always like to think like you have this goal and you have like this like artistic goal or whatever. And like it can take you this long, right? And um, I'm working, so I have like this much time. But if I were to dedicate myself 100% all the time, I'd reach that goal a lot faster. But you know, then there's always money and stuff. So this is the path that uh, I'm on right now and um, just starting to do more art. Uh, yeah, cool. That's about it. Well, uh, like I t said, Javier, <laughs> um, I don't know if you guys know, but we're siblings. And um, I'm the older sibling just by one year. So I also went to a school in Willow Glen, but then after that, I went to a private high school called Bellarmine. So it was a very, it was a culture shock for me, you know, going to a, from a public school, you know, pretty diverse, you know, we had all, it was pretty, very diverse, you had all sorts of people in there, to an all white school and all males. Huge contrast. Um, then C's went to, was going here at MP, so I got to really, uh, for the first time through C's, I got to experience the more of the, you know, the culture, the neighborhood culture, and um, it was a really cool experience for me just getting to know a lot of people from here. Some of them are still my, some of them, some of his friends are my best friends too, so that's pretty cool. Oh, still my friends. <laughs> yeah, homie Jacker, basically. Um, but uh, so let me see, where, where can I keep going? Um, so then I went to community college for four years. It took me a while. Um, but because I really wasn't so sure what to do at first, 
until I found out I wanted to do psychology. Then I went over to De Anza, and from there I transferred over to SF State. Two years, and I was out of there. But um, but this whole time I was at SF State, I knew I wanted. I was very, you know, I'm. I was always into media, specifically video, just because I like telling stories. You know, just through my dad, our, our dad. You know, he's a very, uh, how do you say, animated storyteller. Like he'll he'll act out the characters and use his hands and like you, know, you just get a good laugh every time he tells a story so like that skill was just kind of passed on to me like that's how I, I really just feel about it like that storytelling skill was passed on so when I came across video it just felt like the right medium to exercise my storytelling skills um, so when I graduated I decided to uh, pursue film and I did it freelance so freelance was not something I never thought I would do because you know, it's like my, my college degree, I'm not using it, right? But, um, and it's you're doing a bunch of business on the side, basically. Um, so it was, it was hard, but it was very uh, a rewarding experience because when you do freelance, man, you learn a lot. Like, anybody here wants to be like, anybody here had like entrepreneurial endeavors? Like, want to do their own thing around here? Yeah? Well, it's, it's uh, you know, I, I think it's, it's a really good like uh, life class. And uh, yeah. in real talk, it's a really good life class because it's, it's hard, you get knocked down a lot, but just gotta keep move, pushing forward. Um, eventually, I actually got a, I got a techie job now. I, was, I'm a I, work, I got a contract job, and um, it allows me also to pursue my film endeavors. So now just kind of talking about film a bit more, um, I think you guys saw San Fan and um, I sent it to Kabata, and that was like my first like, you know, professional short film where I had a crew, I uh, had actors, and it was just, man, it was just such an awesome experience. Like, I'll, uh, I'll forever cherish that. And um, how do you call it? One thing, one big thing for me as a filmmaker, I'm first generation Mexican American, is to give justice to Mexican American stories because Hollywood, man, they be, you know, they be always depicting us as, you know, cholos, uh, you know, well, that's what I saw that a lot. Like, yeah, you know, like, and it's, and you know, there's also like, they depict us a lot, like in, you know, like blue collar positions, which is fine, but don't just show a blue collar person, you know, show how three dimensional that person is, you know, if you're. Like my, my dad was a janitor, but he's not a, but the media will only show him as a janitor. My dad's a janitor, he's a father, he was a student too. He did hella stuff, you know, it's not just a janitor and Hollywood likes to just hone in on that. So it's my mission to, you know, break that stereotype. And, um, and uh, How many guys are seniors? Yeah. You guys got any idea what you're doing next? How many of you guys are going to college and stuff? As long as you keep doing something, you'll, you know, go more towards your path. One thing doesn't work out, then you know that doesn't work out, so you switch paths. All you got to do is just keep going, you know. That's really it. Um, and failing is good because uh, failing is when you learn the most. Like you grow out fail. of failure. Like, you need to yeah. fail. Like, your worst failures are your, where you get the best growth, and that's where your character really shows you. You've got to be able to grow out of that. Definitely. Um, I brought you guys something. This is for, for you guys' classroom. It's a little uh, MP, MPK Mini. Um, I know you guys are into like a bunch of stuff, video, music, uh, editing, graphics, and all that stuff. So I brought you guys this so you guys could uh, make your own beats, make your own music um, for your videos or whatever. So it's for you guys. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that's what's up. That's what's up. I, I, I didn't yeah. get I have that when I was here. Uh, let's make this a conversation. You guys got any questions or something we can like bounce off of? Any topics? Give me a word. Why did you guys go to separate schools? I didn't get into the private school that he went to, and also like just felt like um, that's, like he got a scholarship to go there, but like that school is like is expensive, you know. And as like a first generation like. Students, um, my parents were like immigrants, and you know, there's a whole thing also with uh, like being first generation. Like, I feel like we sometimes feel a pressure to like be doctors, engineers, you know, that type of 
stuff, you know, like you feel like you need to do that when you like want to pursue something else, you know, but like the whole reason like why my parents like um, immigrated over here is to give us a, a better life, you know. They didn't have the choice to explore what they want to do. They didn't have the time to dwell about it, to like be like, oh man, what do I want to do? All they were worried about was surviving, putting food on the table, you know. And that goes also for like, you know, any like mental, mental Ill illnesses, you know, that's very common in right now from all ages, from your guys' age to my age. And it's kind of like weird in a way, cause like, again, like um, my parents did not have time to be depressed, have anxiety. No, it's just like suck it up and survive, you know? So those are some other things that are kind of like new to to us, I feel like. Um, I don't know if you guys can relate, if any of you guys are first generation or that type of thing. Um, yeah, so I ended up going to Mount Pleasant and it was great, you know, we, we met. Um, back then we were really into like going out and stuff. We would party a lot. So we met like all sorts of types of people, you know, people with, people who are like extremely rich that we met through like yeah. him to like being at parties here where it gets like shot up every time we're jumping fences and stuff, you know, um, to police, to being here running from the police, to being over there and the police sitting us down and giving us a lecture, you know, in comparison to like yeah, it was how just, things were here. It was such a contrast because yeah, when I went to high school, I really, I really saw the you know just the social economical like uh, divide you know between just I saw I finally saw like just middle class, low class, like, and then just high class. Like it was just, just it's it's wild, you know. Like my uh, when when uh, I'll never forget like when my first in high school when my first. Uh, Winter break came along, you know, like two weeks off. Uh, the kids at my high school were like, hey, so where are you going? And I was like, oh, I'm, I'm going to be here with the fam. What about you? I was like, oh, I'm going to Hawaii. Oh, I'm going to Europe. Oh, I'm going to, oh, man, like all over, the, all over the world, these kids were traveling. And I was like, what? Like, it just, I couldn't make sense of that. But that's when I finally started realizing just like, wow, the, you know, the social cultural divide there is. Yeah, we have a younger sister too, and like all three of us went to separate uh, high schools and colleges as well. I don't know, it just kind of happened. <laughs> yeah. uh, you guys got anything else? Anybody else? Yeah. What, uh, what inspired you to make music? Oh man, I can answer that for sure. So like my cousin um, Alejandro, he, I don't know how he got into it, but he, this guy is like, he's got the ear, you know? Like he can hear something and he'll play it on piano, guitar, drum, bass, whatever you want. And like he's just always really been like musically inclined. So I think um, we just like kind of like got into like hip hop at a young age. This is like not 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 easy, but Kanye graduation days. <laughs> you know, not how he is right now, but um, yeah, like we would listen to music and he started making beats. Uh, he started using FL Studio. And um, I went over to his house and he just, you know, he would just be messing around with that stuff. And eventually, like, I gained an interest to it. Um, and he kind of, like, taught me how to do it. It was all of my, like, music uh, aspirations I, come from him. Because, like, he just kind of introduced me to all that stuff. And, like, um, I just like the, the, the tech aspect of it as well. So technical production, production, music production really interests me. So I did uh, study that for a, a year or two. Um, yeah, music's fun. It's just like another outlet, you know? Like, don't be afraid, afraid to try things. Like, I've done it all, like acrylic, um, you know, acting, theater, music. Although, you know, with having so many outlets, you kind of like don't really focus on one thing isn't always like good, because I'm like, ah, just have so many things that, uh, and ideas that I want to do. I don't know about you. Yeah, I mean, uh I don't really make music, but like I like to, well, our cousin Alejandro, him being so talented uh, allows me to just kind of like explore, you know, like this lyri lyrical stuff. Uh, like I like to just kind of bust a little flow here and there, or just some little like singing tunes. And like sometimes I just, I'll get like a melody stuck in my head and my, I'm able to throw it at him and he'll make a, he'll be able to uh, make a song like on the guitar or beat to just match with whatever whatever vocals I got, and it's just 
it just blows my mind that he has that ability, you know. And uh, I'll never forget one time we were just uh, we were listening to a song uh, at our house, and then he was just like, "Whoa!" He's just filling the song. There's like a cool bass pattern, like boom, 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 boom. and he goes, he gra grabs the bass with, it, and then just just like gets like bobs his head, and then within five seconds, boom, 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 boom. same pattern, you know. And it's just it's just mind blowing to to witness that stuff and uh, right you work with him and it's just like doesn't matter what you say like it'll sound good or like yeah it's like it's cool. it's cool. he's like he like lifts you up to like he's a dr drake he's a dr drake something like that yeah mexican doctor <laughs> although he's, he's light skin and blue eyed so i don't know maybe <laughs> your european uh, european mexican <laughs> uh, you guys got more questions topics yeah. Can you talk more about making your film? Oh yeah. Yeah. Talk about my yeah. Film. Uh, Collaborating. Yeah. I'll talk about my involvement in the film. So, I acted uh, in his film. He had like a month to do it. Um, he just said like, "All right, let's do it." There's like this contest that like they called him up for, and then he took like two weeks to write the script, bouncing off of different people, um, and then I also assisted with production. So. When I say production, I mean money, you know? Like, uh, at least we can do is like feed the, the other actors who were like our friends and you know, everybody was our friends, but like the least we could do is like give them some gas money, food money, or bring food to like the set every time. Um, so I helped out with that a lot. Um, but it was, yeah. Yeah, that, and that was- really on the process too. Yeah, that was really clutch. Um, yeah, it was really, it was a, and it was a life-changing experience. Just uh, I got this uh, this organization called Raw. They hit me up. They're like, "Yo, we like we like your little videos on Instagram." I got a lot of like one-minute videos I just do for fun, and um, they're like, "We got a show coming up in SF. Do you have anything longer format?" I said, "No," but I will, <laughs> you know. And like and like I really like like this one guy says, you know, like. Uh, Cool. Nothing cool. changes. You, like you know, you guys are writing your essays the night before. It's just, yeah. <laughs> like um, he says, he says F how you know. I was about to cuss, but he says F how you know. And I really like that philosophy. It's so simple, but yeah, you know, like you know, screw it. You know, don't think about how you're gonna do it. Just like just get up, get going. And so I didn't even want to think about it. I just said yes. I committed to it, and I was like, all right, I have a month. You know, let's just start go getting to it. So I started like right away, just making the phone calls, getting the team together. He's the first person I contacted. After that, our friend Dog, and then after that, the cinematographer, the guy behind the camera, like, like over here, over there. You know, uh, oh, is there a camera over there? <laughs> I'm sure. <tripping>. Light. <laughs> <laughs> it's just the light. Um, so yeah, everything just started coming together. I really got to put in my producer hat on, and then the screenwriting was really a cool process because, you know. Um, life makes its way into the script all the time. Like there's a lot of events that happened that made itself and that made their way into the script. Like there's this scene, this bottle scene, for example, where um, it's uh, Damien and the and the shaman baker, and the shaman baker, you know, he's looking at the bottle, trying to knock it over with his mind, but nothing happens. And he tells him, he tells Damien, nothing happens because he was forcing it. When he turns away, let's go. Bottle knocks over, right? So that actually really happened. We were, uh, we were all together, you know, going over the script and practicing, and the Shaman Baker, my friend Israel, um, he was, I didn't really, no one really realized it, but he was actually just looking at the bottle, just like that. And uh, all of a sudden, it falls down. And then we all, we all turn like, oh, shit. I mean, oh, shoot. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> and we're like, oh, wow. Like, uh, and then he goes right, like, he's like, he goes, aha. He's like, you see that? And we're like, well, like yeah, the bottle fell. He's like, he's like, I thought about it. He's like, I, 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 made, I saw it in my mind and it happened. And I just thought that was just hilarious and cool. And so that, that made it swing to the script, you know? So a lot of the Samban script is like that. It's just like a lot of the stuff that happened uh, during that whole time. And when we actually, when we were filming, that was another fun experience because you come to realize like when you do, and this also just kind of transcends to life, man. Like when you're, I came to realize, you know, everybody, you gotta have everyone on the right vibe. It's so important. And as you, you know, as you get older too, like you want your friends to have on, to be on the same vibe to elevate you, you know? Do you have anyone that kind of just brings you down? Bad influence, you know, like, you gotta cut them out, you know? And um, 
in Sampan, there was only one person who I had, who wasn't on the same creative vibe as me. And it was challenging for me because <laughs> I wish he was on the same vibe because then he probably would have elevated, you know, the whole production. But, but at the same time, you know, that was a good, that was a good lesson for me to learn, you know, because, uh, you know, it's not always going to be that easy, you know, not everything's going to be the way you want it. And that's just something you got to work with. So I was able. What's the, the genre of your And yeah, the, the, film? the genre is psychedelic comedy. Initially, it was going to be like dark psychedelic, but I met up with C's and, and Dav and these two guys, they went to theater school together and they're just, they're too funny together. I was like, man, I was like, I can't make this dark. I was like, it has to be funny. So the guy he's like talking about, um, <laughs> he's just like very straightforward. He, he couldn't like see like the psychedelic stuff. So he was just always like, what? What's going on? Like, yeah, yeah. Huh? Like, I don't get it. This doesn't make sense. The guy without the vibe, yeah. Like, he, 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 he just couldn't wrap his head. Like, one of the times he even said, like, that, that's impossible. <laughs> and, like, I was like, like, no, man, no, no. It was like a scene where, like, I, I walk out this way, and then I walk in that way. And, like, just that, like, little weird thing. He was like, what's, what's going on? Yeah. <laughs> that makes sense. And, and it just also shows, because, like, um, you know, he's a, he's a good friend of mine, though. Like, he, he went to film school. I didn't go to film school. Um, and, some, and a lot of times I like to think that's my advantage because I, I study psychology mm. and going into film, I just had a, and then I took some classes for fun after I graduated. And I always had like a different eye. I was able to criticize things way more differently, you know, because the rest of the class there was, they were all taught the same way. So they were all critiquing the same, thinking the same. Whereas I came from just a whole other side of it. I was able to think differently. So, you know, a lot of times, so like, I thought it was my weakness, but yeah. not going to film school has actually been my strength and just yeah. studying full, studying movies and, and reading, you know, reading scripts. Um, so all of you guys that like are going to end up going to like an art school or something, um, I think some good advice is like you learn all these things that are like very structured and how they should be, but you learn these things so you can break them after, you know, and do your own thing. And if you don't go to art school, like, just do your own thing. It doesn't matter what um, anybody else thinks. It's really just uh, how, you, how you see it. Do, do your thing. Don't try to do it like somebody else is doing it because they're the best at doing what they're doing. You need to be the best at doing what you're doing. Yeah, I'll tell you guys a little story. Uh, the inspiration behind Sampan, I was on Story Road at a Mexican bakery. You know? I was eating my torta de, de carne asada. And, uh, and I was there with my boy extra and uh, block. Yeah, extra block, yeah, <laughs> jalapenos. And then uh, <laughs> and um, I ordered my torta. I go sit down. Then my friend goes. He orders his. And right at right when he's ordering uh, a fresh cart of you know of uh, of bolillos, uh, how do you say that? loaves. They're you know the, they're coming through, right? Some baker got him. And uh, my friend turns over. He's like, God damn, you know. So he uh, he's like, Yeah, torta. And let me get a. Um, a dozen of that, uh, you know, 12 of those breads. And he gets like, <laughs> he gets a bag, right? So he comes over, he sits down, and he has his bag of uh, loaves of bolillos. And he's like, damn, man, it's all hella warm and stuff. And I'm like, wow, yeah, it's, it's, the bag was just it's warm. And, um, and then I just thought, like, what, what if it's warm forever? I was like, oh, what if when you get close to it, uh, your pupils dilate? Or what if when you get close to it, you start feeling like, I don't know, some psychedelic thing, look into the future? And that's literally how Sampan came about when I just threw that. I just thought, like, what if the bread had magic powers, you know? So inspiration and, you know, the tiniest things, man. And my, my take yeah. on, like, the film is, like, basically, um, like, it's, like, it's just, like, it's, like, fuck fear, you know? Like, fear is just going to always get in your way. And, like, some of the best things are on the other side of fear. And then, like, there's also, like, um, perfectionism. Perfectionism, like, you're never going to reach perfectionism. What you need to perfect is your routine, you know? Like, every day, um, work on that thing that you're working on. That's, that's, what you, that's what your goal is. What you do every day will show in, like, years or whatnot. You know, what you do in the micro will show in the macro eventually. But you can't be, like... Um, aiming for like this perfectionism and not putting let's say like you guys work on a video or something you're like oh I don't have the the sound that I wanted oh I don't have the song that I wanted or oh this shot's like oh you know like still put it out there because like 
you're start, if you feel like you're starting here, you're just going to get better, you know? Just keep that, like, process going, the routine, and then eventually, you know, you'll never reach perfectionism, but you'll get better at what you're doing, you know? Yes. Just like anything else, if you practice every day, you'll get better at it. I started on an iPhone 4. Like, my first videos were just on an iPhone 4, and then I got a DSLR, and I thought I broke it, like, within a month, so when I got the DSLR, I, I was like, yes, I'm a filmmaker now. I'll make movies, like, I got it, you know? But then it broke, and I was like, God damn it. And then I was like, you know what? Screw the damn camera, man. I'm a filmmaker with my iPhone, you know? I came to find out it was just the battery that messed up. But, um, you know, it's just, it just shows, like, you know, it's all state of mind, man. Like, it's all state of mind, really, with a, a lot of things, you know? Yeah, you want to be this, you want to be that, like, nah. You are that, you know? You want to be an artist? No, you are an, art you are an artist, you know? I was always told like, oh, he's, he's gonna be an artist. He's gonna be an artist. And like, I never went to art school, so I felt like, oh man, like, uh, you know, like I didn't feel like I had that validation. But then I just woke up one day and I was like, wait a minute, I am an artist. I've been an artist since I was in like second grade, drawing things for kids. And that's how I, had, I befriended people like back then. I don't know, so you know, just like, it's it's kind of a little bit of that fake it till you make it type of thing, but still like you know, it's a, it's a mindset. I don't, know. I don't know. What else you guys got? Yeah. What was the most difficult part going into like the media career path? Media career path. Um, so technically, like, um, not in like a media career path because I'm I'm in like a technical IT uh, career path right now. So I'm doing like uh, working with computers and uh, gear and stuff like that. But on my own time, I do um, anything creative. Um, but uh, I did once do a, try to do a freelance. Like man, I, I don't have the like skin for that. You know, like it's it's hard to like it could be hard to put yourself out there and like um, try to work with clients and have like this attachment to your artwork. But at the end of the day, it's like you need to detach yourself from like. Um, your artwork and give the client what they want, you know? They want something that you think is hella whack, like, and you're like, oh man, like, why do they want that? Like, this is, my idea is way better. Like, the client's always right, you know? You have to give the client what they want. So there's definitely ups and downs and um, learning the business side of it, not just like trying to get artistic. Uh, yeah, and I, I could add to that because I, before this, before the techie job I have right now, I did freelance video for a year and a half and um, it was really hard uh, because I came to learn like, all right, yeah, I may have like, you know, cool creativity and, you know, some camera knowledge, but ultimately, you know, a big factor is business, you know, and like I, I lacked business skills. So I, uh, one helpful thing was uh, having mentors. I worked for two production companies and I was a production assistant. So I would help them out with everything. Whenever they would hit me up like, yo, we got to shoot over here. Boom, I'd come, you know? And I would just help set up cameras, uh, set up the lights, the audio. I'd be the boom mic a lot of times, you know? I work and, like and that's how I would learn. I learned a lot like that. And, um, but on my own, yeah, on my own though, um, clientele, building a clientele was difficult. But the skills yeah. I learned as a production assistant, I was able to really carry those over into my own stuff. And ultimately, all those experiences, you know, led to um, Sampan and having like a professional production with like a crew of 14 people because of all, all that learning experience. So like that kind of felt like my graduation, you know? Um, yeah. Yeah, you gotta, you gotta put your foot down and just like, yeah. something that like people I've heard before, um, I think it was Warren that, like, I don't know, he said, um, uh, success comes from not taking opportunities. And I was like, huh, I guess that kind of makes sense. But you can think of it two ways, you know, like a lot of people will want free things for you, you know, free, oh, do this video for me, like, oh, do this for me, you know. And it's, it's cool and all, but like sometimes it's things that, you know, I guess it depends on the person. Sometimes it's things that aren't really gonna advance you or help you out, unless you're working with someone who's like um, working with you and you guys are both like building each other up, you know. But um, it's important to like, you know, if you're really thinking about doing this like as a career or anything, just like from the beginning as soon as you can, just start like, you know, set some prices, get better, rate, 
uh, you know, raise your prices. I have a friend who works for Airbnb. He does a, a video for their company. Um, so he shoots like, there's a lot of, uh, you know, jobs in like film, video, uh, in, in a corporate setting. So you like, you film their meetings or you film like, you know, their events, their conferences, and then like you edit their stuff or, or you can be a photographer, a graphic designer for like a company like, you know, like that. And on his own time, he, he does a bunch of um, uh, videos, music videos, he does a lot of music videos. And then he like buys new equipment. Every time he buys new equipment, he's like, all right, y'all, it's that time. Prices are going up, you know? Like, he really puts it out there so like, you know, people don't try to like lowball him or, or whatever. But, yeah, it's a hustle. All right, let's give it up for our guests here. Let's get a round of applause. You guys can come up and ask questions if you want. For a graphic designer, you need to get a quote. Okay, so while we're setting down, did you get a quote already? Yeah, here we go. Huh? All right, just come on up and introduce yourselves. Just say thank you. That's our graphic designers coming up. And everyone else will be taking things down. Oh. All right, so we need to help just kind of.